picture I have is, having got, done all this drawing, I mean, we need to start the painting off, and it's quite laborious. I've already put all that, invested that time, so then you've got to get that onto the canvas. And that's what I'd like to talk about now. My normal process was, it goes back in history, you may know your art history, back in Renaissance times when Leonardo would draw a wonderful masterpiece in, in chalk and charcoal, and then the minions would pierce around the outline. And then they'd come along with a black, black powder in a bag and tap it through the pierced holes and it would transfer a dotted line on the canvas on the, on the wall for the painting. And then the master would come along and disapprove and then flourish and ink it all in and get a wonderful drawing. It's just a way of trans, transforming, transferring one drawing onto a surface. The other way is to use grids and that way you can do a little drawing and then scale it up by a system of grids. Common practice. If you're really clever, you, you could just freestyle it. Look at the drawing, not this. Just the way you go. But something like that, that's already resolved as an image, and I, I just want to turn it into a painting. So what I'll often do is draw it same size and then trace it off. Put the drawing over the, uh, over the canvas. Watercolorists may be familiar with this. And then you use uh, like a graphite paper with a hard pencil and just press through the outlines and you, it transfers the image. Okay, you're with me so far, all these various methods. But I've, I've worked out a little system, I've spent about 12 months on this. I'd like to demonstrate it for you today. So we, we may have a drawing and I've found a way of, um, through trial and error, that I'd like to share it with you. You may find it useful and interesting. This is my subject for today. Uh, you may recognise the corner, the National Gallery, with the castle in the background. Okay, so there's, there's your head scratching preparatory work. I've drawn this in like a lovely pencil. I use Wolf Carbon pencils. Uh, they're terrific. Give a really velvety black and also lovely graduation of tone. So I need to get that on to the canvas and the normal method might be to scale it up, lay it on and trace it off. So here's an enlarged photocopy of the, the drawing, it's from that one, and that's to the scale I'd like to paint. Okay. So we, we might lay that on, uh, tape it up and then transfer the outlines ready for the painting. The very astute among you may recognise this as being a mirror image. It's actually back to front. You're scratching your heads there. Why is it back to front? Because I have a cunning plan that I'm going to share with you. I worked out that just scratching there and looking at things, painting with this, you may be familiar with these palettes for painting. And in desperation one day, I ran it through a printer and it's terrible. It's just awful to print on, because it smudges, it won't fix. And that sat in my head for a few weeks. And then I thought, hold on a minute, if it don't fix, that means I might be able to transfer it. So this is what I did. I've got a drawing here of Bridge House Ambleside. So if you have a home computer and a printer, you can readily have a go at this. One, back to front print out from my drawing, and to, oh, to get the drawing on there, you can take a photograph of it or scan it in. If you don't know what you're doing, get somebody to help you. So uh, <laughs> well, that's back to the reach out sample side. But, standard printing. Standard printing, just um, run through on an ordinary program, and it's awful, it will not fix. But, let's put it on the, uh, the sketch pad. While it's still there, uh, and liquid. So if this was gone, it works really well with watercolour. What sort of paper is it? I'll show you the problem now. It's the, it's the plastic coated palette paper. Uh -huh. That goes on there. This is why I'm carrying so much kit today. <laughs> Had to bring the studio. Just 
uh, this will burnish the image. If you've ever done any print making, it's just really uh, a mono print. It's, it's a transfer. Let's see what we've got. Oh yes. <laughs> so normally that might take, even a small complex drawing might take half an hour to trace off and ink in. Or certainly these large drawings could take a full morning. And this compresses the, uh, the time bar. Now it's the line of Yes. It's once it goes on the paper, it's fixed. The only thing that's that's uh, subject to uh, the possible problem is its its permanence. It's probably permanent under normal circumstances if it's if it's treated like a watercolor. But this this is like an inkjet black, and the watercolor floats over the top really well. In fact, I've tried out variations on it. This is a the same process on watercolour paper with the paper dampened and I think you'll agree it has a hand done quality it sort of looks a bit wet into wet a little bit sort of um, lost and found I'm going to do the same for our subject of the afternoon which is here are my these are four sheets that have been quartered and then I've taped them together what I do at home in the studio is I'll run them off the press and just lay them on in sections and, and register them and just apply them to the canvas. Because it's dried out, it's not going to leave a very strong impression. And the, the problem is, although it's beautiful with the watercolour paper, and that's not as good as I can achieve with it, it's um, on watercolour paper, it's very sympathetic to the process. So you've done a lovely drawing, you really like the drawing, you want to make a painting of it, you could use the system to transfer it easily with watercolour paper. Canvas panel is a, a bit more of a, an issue because it doesn't absorb the moisture in the same way. And I tried it on the canvas and it just disintegrates. If you put any moisture on, it, it just runs and bleeds and you can't, you can't make it work. The only way is to print it straight from the press onto the dry canvas while everything's fresh. But if there's any time factor involved, it's had a chance to partially dry, we need to get moisture back in. And the way I thought it through was to use uh, an acrylic primer, which has a viscosity which holds the image so it, it won't flood and float away. If I had tried it without this, it would be disastrous. I'd put it on and it would be just a formless blobby mass that would win the Turner Prize. But uh, in this instance, we want definition, you know, we want something that uh, is going to hold the, uh, hold the image. And the beauty is, once the acrylic dries out, which it does immediately, it fixes it, and it's pretty tough. You can scrub over the top of the drawing and it will stay put. So, <coughs> second technicality of the day is to apply a thin priming if you've ever painted in acrylics or oil, I'm sure you've seen this stuff, it's gesso primer. We want a thin coating on top of it. This is a commercially prepared canvas panel. <coughs> it's got to go on rather thin, but not with, not with water, just by brushing out. And it's got to be almost drying out, it doesn't take long. And it's, I can sort of tell by feel that it's going to, when it's in the optimum condition to receive the image. While I'm doing this, I haven't heard anybody say, isn't it cheating? If you have any moral quandaries about this, it may be not for you. But uh, I will leap to the uh, long-held defense of artists that it's uh, it's a, it's a means to an end, but the other thing is, you've already drawn it once, 
what you're trying to prove. It's just get it, getting the drawing onto the canvas. And if you're particularly fond of your drawing, you can put all kinds of vigour into the drawing, which you might not have the courage to do on a sheet of expensive watercolour paper. And once you're happy with your, the drawing, you'll know by this process, it's going to transfer all of the energy of the drawing by a simple means of uh, a transfer printing technique. There must be no dry areas, otherwise it really won't uh, transfer the image. Just checking that it's got that, uh, that sheen. And then uh, away we go. Let's uh, transfer that. This will just help it to dry up and it, it gets rid of the surplus. Right. This forms little ridges, you may see at close range, they, they need to come off. It's just a, a thin skin and it's uh, just to say it's the viscosity of the acrylic that holds the image, stops it flooding away and, and, and disappearing. You can see in my studio the long winter evenings simply fly by. Yeah. <laughs> the other, the other uh, phrase I, I quite smirk when I hear it is, it's like watching paint dry. <laughs> but you see, artists can't understand that because one of the most compelling things about watercolour is watching it dry and having the courage <laughs> to drop the colour in at the optimum moment. moment. <laughs> had a little confessional with an artist friend of mine once. He sidled up to me and said, Graham, you know uh, you know that saying? It's like watching paint dry. Yeah? He says, I quite like watching paint dry. <laughs> do you? So do I. Do you? Yeah. <laughs> no ridges. I feel it drying now. Just the, uh, the process of burnishing the, the primer into the canvas. Now, you know, the printmaker's technique is to get this belly down like that. A willing helper might lift that corner for me. I was gonna say, so Thank you. These make a lovely job. A little printmaker's burin. Let's see if I'm get, getting uh, a result. Yes, right. So now I can impress the image onto the partially dried acrylic and then we can get some painting done. So you can see um, this, this probably took about 20 minutes to put together and then a few minutes to place onto the canvas. The drawing could take a, a, a in well in excess of an hour or two hours of this, this type of subject. And I'm always itching to get cracking with the painting. So I've, once I got the, uh, the hang of doing this, I found it really um, liberating. It's not that I don't, I don't um, dispel all traditional methods. I still use them a lot. But for certain paintings, this is my preferred method of transfer now. It's looking good. It's a bit weak there, let's go back. As long as it doesn't slip. I'm hoping you'll see um, a, like a, 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 a rain-swept corner of Edinburgh. There's a black cab turning at the lights. <coughs> the tram system has been recently reinstalled. The only thing that you won't see is the castle. I'll have, I'm just going to paint that in, because it's very misty. Here. The grand unveiling. Could you get a second print of that if you wanted? Yes, you can. All right. uh, particularly with watercolour, you get a very delicate silvery image. Thanks right. for that. So that's that's now served its purpose. spend a bit of time checking that the, the camera can pick up the image. Mm -hmm. 
Right, I'm mixing this with a trace of yellow ochre. 